We're live in the Facebook. We got the Zoom thing going on here, and we've got a special guest with us, Ben. What's up, Ben? What's up, Tristan? How's it going? Good, man. Just excited to have you on. I know you uh, you do a lot of cool things. We were doing some research on you, and we were we were impressed. So can you tell us a little bit about your business and where you're located, just in case people listening and have referrals for you? Sure. So I would say that I'm still in the middle of my build. I know a lot of people see these team leaders, these people that are already built and established, and like I'm still right in the middle of that. I know a lot of people I've learned from is those guys probably more than anybody is that are still in the middle of building it. A lot like, oh, I built it and here's where I'm at. Um, so I'm still in the middle of my build with four agents, um, one ISA, one TC, one admin. Um, and those four agents are all still very new. Um, I'm out of Wichita, Kansas. And like last year, I sold 63 houses. Three of those were for my team. 60 of those were for me. And so that's kind of where I'm still oh. in that like, Produce production mode where I still got to produce as a team lead, but I'm not quite like that. I'm all just a team lead point. And, you know, I'm juggling a lot of hats, a lot of positions right now. While also building out the marketing suite and China has really been a huge asset for being organized with all that. Same with the AI assistant and really tracking and measuring everything, not only I'm doing, but also all, all my new people. Cause it's one thing for me to be good at it, but it's a whole nother ball game to get other people to be good at it. So that's kind of yeah. what I'm at. You know, I'm actually glad that we were able to catch you at this stage in your business, you know, because it, it just gives us more real time insight into what it's like to be at this stage in building your business. You know, when we get the folks who, who, who are on the other side of the hill, I mean, yep. their insight is incredibly valuable, right? They have the, the, the advantage of um, hindsight, right? right? But when you're in the moment, um, I, I love hearing folks in your position talk right now because I think that uh, that feeling of being the team leader that produces the overwhelming majority of the business is probably where a lot of teams are right now. And yep. I would have to guess that's the hardest part of building a team is, is stepping out of that production role um, and empowering your agents to be the producers. So I would love to hear a little bit more about what you're doing to, to move that ball forward to hear from Tristan, Brett. And um, I'm, I'm excited about today. I know that you've taken the Chime platform really by the horns and are building something awesome with it. So uh, we appreciate you and I'm excited to see it. Yeah. And I think that's been a big tremendous help for helping to convert more of the leads instead of just taking a straight up complete prospecting approach, which we do a lot is using a lot of our videos, using the website to help us convert these leads, like kind of for us, essentially, allowing the website to do a lot of the heavy lifting by making videos, um, helping the website for people to filter people, watching people's activity on the website, where they're looking, what they're looking at, watching their behaviors so that we know who is worth calling, you know, who is responding to this stuff, because I don't want to bother anybody any more than they want to be bothered, just like anyone is. And we do a lot of video, we do a lot of text, we do a lot of email and a few phone calls. You know, once we've identified like that person's most likely going to want to talk as long as our approach is good. You know, in our approach, what I've seen is a lot of people have a bad approach when they, they first have that phone call because people want a phone call. They just don't want to be like sold to and just talked at and they want to have more of a conversation. And so a lot of it has to do with like we, we set it up really well to be a warm call, but um, it's a lot more of a conversation than it is like a sales call or a telemarketing call. Mm -hmm. Like most people have a big hesitation with, with these websites now, because they're not right. naive anymore where they know if they put a phone number in, they're going to get called. Like it's just what happens so. when you pick up the phone. So yeah, it's, it's the year 2021 guys and girls for that matter. If you put your phone number in a website, you're getting a phone call. Right. And if your leads don't know that, remember, they're going to, they're going to be one of the few. Most yeah. people, most people know that these days. So talk to us about this approach, uh, because I think the approach to online leads or leads in general uh, is the make or break, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I know this is something that Tristan and his team are doing an incredible job at. So I'd love to hear uh, your take and your approach and what you're training your agents on. 
So I kind of had a big light bulb moment when I was on um, Zillow for a little while and we did their live transfer um, service and that worked incredibly well to do that. But then I started to study it more and figure it out more. And essentially all of Zillow's leads are PPC leads that they live transfer you to, to a website. So I'm like, why aren't we building the same model, but better, which is essentially what we're in the middle of now is generating our own PPC leads and then letting them look at houses, you know, as they sign up, have them look at houses, give them warm touches, nurture them. And then once we get them on the phone, live transfer them to an agent which is essentially our, our approach. Like we don't call them right as soon as they sign up on our website. We let them consume some of the video content. We let the AI bot warm them up. We let the text messages warm them up. The videos warm them up. And honestly, probably six times out of 10, they've responded to one of those before like they answer a phone call. And so it's a lot of those, we can already see their situation and be like, let's give them a phone call and talk about it. They're already familiar with us. They know what's going on. We know more what's going on with them so that we can have more of a specific conversation right from the start. Um, you know, for example, if they signed up for Derby Homes for sale, we'd call them and we'd just be like, hey, Tristan, how's it going? Good. I saw you're looking at Derby Homes for sale. Were you just looking at the area or you wanted other areas as well? Like, well, actually, we want to look in Mulvane too. And um, we're just kind of opening that whole Derby Mulvane area. And like, they'll just start going off from there and I'd maybe ask two questions you know and I didn't really go into all this and I didn't be like hey I'm Ben with Team Home Miro because as soon as you say that phrase you lump yourself into another salesperson everybody is triggered by that phrase they have a reactionary defense response as soon as they hear that and they go into he's a salesperson mode you know and the other so the other one they like to the one there is like oh I'm just looking it's like well that makes sense you know are you just yeah. looking for fun or are you looking to make a move that's that's a good it's a good transition. Continuing to go with that, I think, and not just giving up right away when they just initially are caught off guard by the by the phone call um, and just sticking with it, but being quiet more than anything because we stay quiet a lot of times and they'll break the silence and they'll start Ooh. talking because they don't like the awkward silence more than anything and they'll start talking more and more and more and more and then we just keep guiding the conversation from there that's a that's a yeah. good point ben i have a question for you about the lead sure. what where are they coming from right now like for us they're coming from google mm -hmm. they're coming from a little bit of facebook not a lot and yeah. then we're testing out something with chime with dude uh randy i don't know the name of the company but i know it's through chime it's seller leads and they've been we're really surprised in a happy great way that it's it's so far it's been pretty good, but that's where we get them. And because they're not like extreme bottom of funnel, like uh -huh. Redfin or realtor.com, Zillow, it takes a little bit of time. Exactly what you're saying. Right. Yeah. So where are you getting your leads from and who produced what, well, sorry, where did you get all the 60 plus closings from last year? You personally. Sure. Um, so Zillow was what I was on for, a good more portion of the first part of last year, but then as my PP and I was building my PPC at the same time too. So as I was converting Zillow leads, I was reinvesting into my PPC and my chime and my long-term database system. So PPC, but I, and I say PPC, but that's coming from Google and from Bing because Bing has probably been more profitable than Google based on the demographic that uses it. Sorry. Pause on that. Pause on that. <laughs> Holy shit. It's, it's, it's actually, it's an, it's an older demographic. I mean, that a more mature demographic. That makes a hundred percent. Dude. They're more, oh. they're more financially able. That's what needs to happen is they need to downsize. That's the problem with why we're stalled. So. Yes. All right. So there's something I, <laughs> I recently perfect. found out from a friend, uh, ex-military pilot uh, work still works for the government as a contractor for them. Yeah. And we're going over everything on the back end because he helps them with AI. Yeah. He's like, Tristan, did you know that um, when you join the military, you're still working for them? Anything, any work that you do for them, you can't install a browser, outside browser that doesn't come with the system. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. So people don't know that when you, when, when you go on Bing and you get leads from Bing, these are military people. These are people who've got money who yeah. have a good living, who can buy, but nobody yeah. targets them. I'm like, that's, I didn't know, dude, I, I didn't know that. And yeah. that, that's so cool that you just brought it up because it's it's true. Nobody talks about Bing. Randy, the where's best. their Bing department, dude? Let's go. That is the Bing best kept secret in PPC. 
We're losing Brett. Brett, we lost you a little bit, buddy. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's like the best kept secret right now. Yep. Well, and being, being as the people who go straight to their search bar and just type in there because they want it click done easy, they just want it done, which is exactly what they want in a realtor. I don't want the hassle. I just want it done for me. And that's like kind of our service model too, is like, we just want it done. We're going to be the ones providing it for you. Just make it easy for me. Same concept as Amazon, Uber, Netflix, provide the service easier, quicker, faster, better than anyone else. And just make it easy. It'll make it difficult. So I just texted Randy, where's our Bing team? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I, I see, I see Ariel get a lot of, um, S, uh, being SEO leads really surprises me. I don't, I don't know if any if any other Chime clients are seeing that, but uh, you know you know what Bing's number one search term is? No, what? Google. Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure they all are. Just know that Bing's number one search term is Google. Uh, I'm I'm sure they lose sleep over that. <laughs> I'm sure that infuriates them. Hey Ben, what's your call to action when you when you're when you get a seller on the line, for example, for you model? I kind of, I kind of want half of that. Couldn't hear you, Brett. Have to guess. We're gonna have to guess what Brett is saying. Brett, Brett is saying, "What's your call to action, Ben?" Once, once I get a seller on the line, is what I heard. So we, we actually identified and realized that probably about half of these buyers that come through are actually sellers, you know, and they want to know where they're going next. And so there's a couple of ways we identify their sellers is that you take their name and number and white page it, and then go look up the name and tax record. And you already know they're a seller from there. So from there, they've indicated, I want to buy, but you can look up if they're a seller or not. So now you can talk to them like a seller buyer, not just a buyer. So that's one piece of it. And it's about half of them are sellers. And so, once we identify them as sellers, we have a listing agent um, video that goes out and it's a bomb bomb video that introduces myself as part of it. And it'll say like, Hey, I'm not sure if you're thinking of selling or not, but I want you to introduce myself. Just get to put a face to the name. And then just in case you are selling, here's my listing info for you to have, keep looking at houses, that kind of thing. So it introduces us as not just a buying agent, but also a selling agent for whenever three to nine months down the road, they're ready. Um, that's part of it. But then the call to action, like with those ones, especially if I find out their seller on the phone as we switch to getting a game plan together um, at their house to give them options. And we like, whenever we get to a point where we're talking and it makes sense, we usually just ask them, you know, what makes sense for me to come out to your house and get that game plan together, to give you options for when you are looking to move to the next house. Yes, that would, because I'm not coming out there to list their house or sell them or this and that. Most of them already think they know the price of their house, but what they don't have is a game plan for options of where they could go next. And that's where they've been really liking that phrasing of what we're doing. So that way, when I walk through there, like I asked them for the tour of the house and then I kind of show them our process, which takes maybe one or two minutes. Be like, here's our process. Whenever we find the right next house, you already got your ducks in a row for getting your house on the market, or you got your financing lined up to do a bridge loan or whatever creative structure we need to do so that your offer isn't contingent because we know those aren't getting accepted right now. Um, and they really appreciate like the one-on-one -on -one consulting in person on that. And it, and it helps humanize it and it helps them get to know us and meet us. So it's not just like this sales guy on the phone or this video guy that I've never met before. I've actually met with them and we talk, we know each other. I like that. Um, can we go a little into why you convert at a higher level? What have you seen as the difference? Is it, is it the phone call? Is it the text? Is it the video? What allows you to really take it to that next level? I think it's the video. So like if you go to my website and check it out, wichita.homehero.com, there's a lot of video on there. And then also one of the lead sources I didn't bring up that we're starting to expand it more into is YouTube um, and how much organic growth you get from there and how many people will watch your hours and hours of videos before they ever reach out to where they're already sold on you. They already know you, they've got your demeanor. And so like they, they pick up an energy and a vibe and like a, a style of what you're doing from your videos more than anything. Cause it's the closest thing to in person that we can do before we've ever met somebody. Dude. So as they watch these videos, they know you, they like you, they're already bought into you. 
in a lot of ways, like they're reaching out directly to you. You straight there. out, you straight out took the whole top screen as your video. I'm showing your screen right now. Yeah, and so it starts off with that local Wichita experts and the Wichita landscape, like Brett recommended, and then we put in because we know this is the second most visited page on our website. They come in to look at houses first, and then they go to this page, and so they'll be at the top. And whether you're looking at this on desktop or mobile, which 60% of our traffic is mobile, 40% is desktop. Um, Does the video show on mobile too, or do you scratch that on mobile? Nope, it shows on mobile too. So it shows up, shows the Wichita landscape, shows we're local, and then goes right into this video. And then most people watch these without sound on. And so that's why you got to have the subtitles on there so that they can read that and understand what they're saying. You know, and then from there, it goes straight into which location you're looking in, which is that LM Papa or LP Mama script. Like, use the website to do that stuff for you. You don't need to be saying that. Use the website to do that stuff for you. They can filter themselves into location and price. Then you can go straight into motivation and human connection and figuring out about them. So that way, it's not really a sales call. It's more like a life um, call, service call. So let me hold on. Let's see here. I'm going to show your screen. Uh, can you guys see his website again? Randy? Learn that one from Brett. <laughs> oh, well, look, yeah. we're, we're good. Okay, good, good, good. All right. So I love that that you've included a lot of video and you give them exactly what they want. See the breakdown. I love this, dude. This is really still cool. building this out because there's more I want to put on that front page. Well, you already have quite a few communities out here. Look at that. Cities, well, neighborhoods, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just click on our neighborhood. Hold on. The second most visited one is is the buy page because we work with a lot of relocation people and a lot of first time home buyers. How do I we buy? That's primarily who's going to be on our website. And I've learned a lot of that from Brett in his trainings that he put out there. Dude. Brett probably recognizes some of this format. <laughs> How do I buy with videos? Is this Brett's idea? Um, that is, yeah, it's very similar to Brett's process. So I went and looked right. at his and I didn't just completely copy it. I went and developed my own, but I used a lot of the same concept. A lot of video, dude. I really love that. Um, how's how is your that YouTube? impacting your website speed? Are, are oh, you wait. able check this you out. to keep it fast? I, I needed to, to go check out is like, how fast is this thing? Make your website page faster. This is page speed insight from Google. Okay. Let's just do it live, okay? Yeah. Cross your fingers, Randy. <laughs> it's stuck big time. It's going to be That's awesome. Good. Drum roll. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. Man, this is taking a little longer than I thought. Here we go. Not bad. Look at that. Hey. Better than, better than most, man. Better than most. I love that. So you have. Look, time to, inter time to interact. All good. Speed index. First really country. good. Dude, that's all really good. You're, all above, you're above average. Mostly you're getting 60s and 70s. So that's yeah. Let With all those here. videos, I would have been concerned, but I think those are really great results. So you got mobile at 83, okay. which is a B, and then you got desktop at almost 100%. That's awesome. See? That's really good, guys. I love that. So see, nothing to be scared about, Randy. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, that I, on and I'm, I'm I knew it was going to work the whole time. I was just setting us up. <laughs> that was great on the fly ben that's awesome bro i'm really impressed with the video aspect of what you do because i think you're right the conversion happens because people can can get to know you without having to talk to you on the phone so i'm assuming and this is an assumption so tell me if i'm wrong on this one when people reach out to you they feel like they already know you yep it's kind of weird. We'll get a little bit of the local celebrity effect, like out in person where people see me and they're like, I recognize you from somewhere. Where do I know you from? And I was like, were you looking at houses online recently? They're like, yeah. I was like, it's probably from there. Like, <laughs> it's, it's kind of crazy, like kind of crazy, but. You know, it's funny. Um, it's funny to hear you say that because I remember when I first heard Brett talk about how he implemented video in a big way, like what you're doing. He, he mm -hmm. said that and I thought, oh, that's just, that's just Brett being Brett, you know, kind of, yeah. but no, it's real. You're, living, you're, 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 uh, you're corroborating a story. It's also, it's one of those things where when you call somebody and you're like, Hey Randy, how's it going? Good. It's like, Hey, it's Ben. I'm the guy that's been emailing you and sending you videos. They're like, Oh yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's cool to them that the guy from the videos is calling them 
or it's kind of weird to them where like this guy that's on videos I'm talking to now, he's a real person that I interact with now. Like it's a little bit, they already look at you from an authority frame, celebrity factor, expert level. Cause you put out all this content, like you're the source of information and now you're talking to them. They listen to you. They take you more seriously. If they're a serious, interested person, they want to hear what you have to say and they'll have a good conversation with you. I think that's awesome. So would you mind just going through some of the content again that you go through and we'll post your website in the forum if you don't mind for other people to check yep, out. Please do. Uh, but a lot, a lot of it is, you know, it's the website content that's on the front page of it, but then it's, it's also, there's a lot, a good amount on the back end through bomb bomb um, that I've built into the smart plans that just as much as I've built out the front end of my website and I'm continuing to build that out. I'm building out the back end just as much with uh, videos. So like one of the very first videos I send out is hi, lead name. I'm Ben, nice to meet you, like smiley face. And then it's got uh, just a little explainer video that says like, hi, I'm Ben. I just want to introduce myself personally through video. Thanks for signing up the website. If you wouldn't mind, go ahead and just reply back to this email, the location you're looking for, where you're looking. And then we'll just kind of get started from there. Thanks. See you later. Like just that initial intro and just the warm tone they're getting helps them like start to understand or pick up. Like I'm not this crazy salesperson that they're all scared of because most of them are scared of realtors and they've heard the nightmare stories of this realtor screwing me over and all that. And it's the number one thing they look for. And the realtor is trust of like, can I trust this person? Not only is he a good person, but also can he get the job done and what I need him done? So it's like, that's what I'm trying to convey is those two things of trust and competency of everything. And, and you do that a lot through video for whatever reason, it's like, they'll listen to you through video way, way more than they will on the phone or in person. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like text. When somebody texts you, mm -hmm. you have, you have the ability to either check it right then right? Mm -hmm. Or check it later when you have time to fully text back, right? And so it's the yep. same thing with video. You set it aside yep. to, to fully engage with it later. And the cool thing about YouTube, man, is that according to the stats, most people that go into YouTube are there to, to learn for a little bit longer. So not just the, the 10, 15 seconds on TikTok, the 30 seconds on Insta, or the one or two minutes on Facebook, right? Well, and this is why I believe that those platforms work so much better, YouTube, Google, and Bing, is because it's direct search intent. You went there to go find what I'm presenting to you. Facebook, Instagram, all those other ones, like you didn't go there to look for houses. So I'd rather have less leads, but better leads, and be talking to the right people than just broadcasting to everyone. And like, you kind of get what you pay for. Like, yeah, it's cheaper, but you get a lot of junk, a lot of look loose, a lot of tire kickers. Like, I don't really want leads. Like, I want clients. Like, and so I'd rather just do less leads of PPC that don't cost me a fortune like Zillow do does and just work well with people that you work well with and just be for who you're for instead of trying to like talk to everybody. I don't really want to talk to everybody. I just want to talk to people that want to buy and sell houses. Like, I think that's the big uh, like misconception is that people always think they need more, 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 more leads. And the reality is you don't, you just need better tools to convert the leads you already have because you're better off focusing a high amount of energy on a few amount of people rather than a high amount of energy on a large number of people because yep. you're, you're more than likely going to, to miss the boat on the really serious folks if you try to spread your net too wide. So the tools that you've implemented are helping push these people down the funnel and you're just standing there catching or picking the low hanging fruit. Yeah. The best ones. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this way is that a good marketing and sales process not only attracts the right people, it repels the wrong people. So if mm -hmm. I lose some people or convert some leads or don't get them, like I'm okay with that because I I'm, I'm making sure I'm not getting the people I don't want. Like I went and studied my market. And it's like, we did 5 billion in real estate even at 1% of the entire market, it's 50 million, which is a lot in our market. I don't want the entire market. Like I just want the best part of the market. Like I want to be the most optimized, most profitable because I'm not for everybody. And honestly, I just, I don't necessarily want everybody. I just want to provide the best service for the best clients and not be like overly greedy thinking like, oh, I'm going to get everything. Like you're not going to get everything. Like just go for the best ones. And well, that's the difference right. between a mindset of scarcity and abundance, I think. Yeah. 
That's a good you know, point. Tristan, you also asked about conversion yeah. of everything. I think there is an appropriate level of activities that need to take place. With Chime has a really good dashboard for that on the backside. I think that's the biggest indicator I've seen the difference of no matter how much awesome you make, like the marketing system and the front end website, you still have to send out an X amount of text, X amount of emails, make X amount of calls to these people. There has to be a, a certain level of activity there where it's either a quantity quantity discussion we're having or a quality discussion. And that's what I've seen like with new agents I'm bringing in this business as awesome as this tech is and everything else. Like you still got to put in the work and you still got to be good with people. That part hasn't changed. Like, and if anything, that part has become more valuable because of all this tech and marketing and people trying to outsource and take the human piece out of it. The better you are at the human side of it, like the better you're going to be at this business. So that's, that's been a big reason why the conversions have, have done so well with all this is that we're keeping both of those in tandem because it's kind of like you see some people go all old school all belly to belly just friends and family and then some people go all tech all automation and it's like there's got to be a happy like marriage in between the two to really provide a better service for clients that's very true i, I agree with that man i think that that's a that's a challenge right there but I think the way you're doing it is is really key because Randy and I were talking about it before. You're you're currently in your business building it out, so you understand the the small nuances mm -hmm. that you need to tweak to make it work, right? And and some teams and in some cases some brokers just want to go all the way to the top and not understand that process. Yeah. That that we need to we really need to be in there or at least have been there at some time to understand how those little tweaks can, can really work. And that's why I love what you're doing, by the way. Thanks. It's been really cool, dude. All right. You got a minute, two minutes, anything that we missed that you wanted to share? Yeah. I already feel like I need a part two and three to this one. right? Now. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll have some follow-up ones, right? Let me build it out a little more and we'll, we'll talk some more, but I would say one big thing that we've recently discovered like as in this month is like we've sent out more texts this month than we sent out emails so we've sent out 16,000 texts this month we've sent out 13,000 emails this month and those texts that we're sending out are you're going straight to the listing discovery tool and we're texting people houses to check out because it shows up as a picture when it's an iphone that's a house for people to look at and so we're using we're keeping the main thing with the main thing, which is houses. And we know this from not only our website activity that people look at houses first, a second, but also the property alerts. They open way more property alerts than smart plans. So keep the main thing, the main thing, which is houses, but do it on a text deliverability system, not just email, because consumers don't really check their email on their phone that often. They check their text like crazy. So the more you're just sending text directly to people, not only is it keep keep them keep you top of mind but it keeps them engaged on houses that they may or may not would have considered so like text i feel like is a huge deliverability platform to where it'd be cool if chime came out with like a text accountability feature on the reporting section you got agent mm -hmm. accountability you know email accountability if you had a text accountability one that would be really cool to see the metrics of that from a text marketing perspective oh yes all that mm -hmm. so, all right dude and right now you're using the are you using mass texting individual texting a combo of both what does that look like combo of all of the above like when we do the listing discovery tool we got to go to that listing suite and it's like you know all these listings match your leads let's just send them out to consider on that um, but then we also do targeted texting based on whether they're in our outreach response hot warm or nurture pipeline and so and i and I, I call it more like batch texting than necessarily like mass texting because it's not like we're texting hundreds of hundreds of people we'll probably be texting you know like 12 that are in our outreach that we just haven't had a chance to get a hold of yet um or like 13 in our hots that we know the hots are now to two months but the 13 we're just sending out a check-in text through a batch text way or same thing with the warms like there's a frequency level we have of like um, the amount of outreach based on the pipeline they're in and there's a lot of it is based on their timeline because their timeline is the most motivating thing that they have out there so depending on their timeline is how much we reach out because you don't want to have too much but you also don't want to miss it by not being there for them all right i like that randy yeah. any questions buddy no i mean there's a lot in here to unpack um yeah definitely <laughs> if, if if you're on this make sure you go back and watch the recording 
Uh, we will definitely be uh, getting Ben back on here to, to see how things progress. Uh, thank you very much for your time today, Ben. Really appreciate it. Appreciate what yeah, you're doing. Thanks for having me on. Uh, well, you know what? Last question, because it pertains to, to this. It's from Nick. It says, are yeah. you using the unlimited texting through Chime only? Um, or what are you using? So that, that's a good question. Um, I kind of learned this method through uh, Brett as well, too. As they get more down the funnel on the hots, I'm going to get them on my personal cell phone more than I want to get them on my Chime number. Um, so the more down the funnel they get, the more personal they get. But I do use the unlimited texting feature because that's kind of the name of this webinar, if you will, is maxing out the system. And my point is with that is like, don't just get this awesome website and have it sit there. Max out the front end website features use the heck out of it like on the back end like really just beat the brakes off it to see how much you can really like use this thing with and don't just like sit there and be like oh i got a crm which is how i think most agents are it's like but do you use it the thing's a ferrari but if you don't drive it well like you're not going to win the race like you need to like beat the brakes off this thing and that's why i, I see it like <laughs> that's what needs to be happening here is like max out everything you can use the system for right. like test it like you probably don't want me to tell that to everybody, but I'm like, test the limits, find yeah. the limits, don't break it. Dude, please do. You know, would, <laughs> totally. Would, it would be a mistake not to, right? Nick says yeah. Nick says he's got a Hyundai, so shit, he's fucked. He says. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Sorry. No, he said it himself. So I love that. Ben, you rocked yeah. it. Thank you so much. Let's definitely do another one, probably two more, so we can expand yeah. on some of these things. Yeah. Thanks for being on. And again, what areas do you cover? Uh, Wichita, Kansas area. So it's kind of the whole, let's see, what is that? Southwest part of Kansas. So biggest city in Wichita. It's really the only, um, sorry, Southeast. I don't even know my own directions. My bad. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to, in Oklahoma city. I'm going to text you after. Cause I'm assuming we could probably get some good investment properties out there. Good return, positive cash flow. Yep, about sixty-five to eighty thousand. What you can buy a house for, and it'll rent for six fifty to eight hundred a month. Randy, that one percent rule. Randy, whoa, uh, this is it. Ben. This is your guy. I'm gonna text you. Okay, Ben. I'll hit you up, buddy. That sounds Thanks, awesome. Guys. Thank good. you, everybody. I'll take it easy. See you guys.